Pete, we're getting ready to pray. Hope you came in expecting God to do something great. We may be few in numbers, but God can still come in the room. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for this day that we've never been, we've never seen before. We thank you for our opportunity to come into your house. We thank you for this opportunity to bless your name, to worship you, to give you glory, to give you homage, Father. We thank you for another day of life. We thank you for strength. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for glory that shall rest in this place. Father, we pray now that you will forgive us for any sins that we have committed, those that we know about, those that we don't know about, God. We ask that you will wash us, renew us, and satisfy us for your glory, God. We pray now, God, that you would cleanse us of anything that is unrighteous, God, anything that is contrary to your will, Father. We ask that you will use your blood that was shed on Calvary to wash us and renew us in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for this service that you will have your way. We pray that you will move in this service. We pray that you will heal, deliver, and set free. We pray that salvation will take place in here. Somebody will be saved. Someone will know you in the pardon of their sins, Father. I pray now for the praise and worship team that you will anoint them afresh. Give them songs of Zion to minister to your people this morning. Father, I pray for the preach man that he will come and give a mighty word, a revelatory word that we need today. Father, I pray for our families that are at home, God. I pray that you will touch them now. Those that are watching on the live stream, Father, I pray that you will meet them where they are, whether they be in their homes, whether they be in their cars, whether they be at their businesses or their workplaces, God. I pray that you will meet them, Father. I pray that you will heal this land, Father. Give us healing in the land. COVID is going to and fro everywhere, Father. But I know that you are a healer that still heal today. You still perform miracles. You still deliver people, Father. So I pray now, God, that you would do a mighty work in the earth, Father. I pray now, God, for my church family. I pray for our leaders. I pray for the first family, Father, that you would bless and keep them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Did anybody come to give our wonderful God some praise? Hallelujah. 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 Brother Tevin said in the prayer, God is still a healer. God is still a deliverer. God is still a way maker. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And we come to bless his name this morning. Hallelujah. We come to magnify him. God, we love you. Hallelujah. And we brought our praise with us. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah.
say, I'm, this is not my home, Mother Jones. I'm just a pilgrim whew, coming through this foreign land. This is not where my end is going to be. Whew, hallelujah. He's coming back. He's coming.
Yourself of this simple life. 
promise keeper. Thank you for being a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Every word that God has spoken. Hallelujah. He's able to perform every word that he has spoken. Hallelujah. Nothing that God has spoken over your life. Hallelujah. We'll return for you God hallelujah we worship you God hallelujah we acknowledge that you are God and God alone hallelujah hallelujah you are Alpha you are Omega hallelujah and we just worship you this morning hallelujah hallelujah we worship you this morning hallelujah hallelujah you are Alpha
people.
look at somebody. You can keep your hands on. You don't have to touch them. Just point your hand towards them and say, God made a way for me. I don't have time to tell you all the details. Come on. I need you to look at somebody else, y'all. Come on, talk to them and say, God made a way for me. Look at somebody else and say, you know what? He made a way for you too. But there was no way God made a way. Look at somebody and say, who did it? Ask them a question and say, who did it? Who opened the door? Who brought you through? Who delivered your mind? Who blessed your house? Who covered your family? Who protected you from God? Who healed your mind? Who made the way? Lift your voice and say, God did it. And for this, God we serve. Angels bow before him. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Somebody say he's a mighty God. A mighty God we serve. God bless you. God bless the entire house. What a joy it is for us to be in the presence of the Lord. But it's like this the Lord has favored us because he has not allowed the enemy to show up triumph over us. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. The Bible says that it is by his mercies that we're not consumed because his faithfulness fails not. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God has been faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you. God has been faithful even when we were not. He has been faithful. Amen. God bless all of you, our viewing audience. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedules to plug in with us here at Life Point Church. And we endeavor to love God, love people, and serve the community. I'm extremely grateful to be here. We have a few in number today. Amen. But I'm grateful to see all of you all here. Amen. Aren't you glad that God bless you to see a new year? God bless us to see a new year. And I've learned to appreciate God for everything. I said, I've learned to appreciate God for everything. I want to thank God for uh, Dr. Jamika. Amen. Uh, always there and always present and ready to serve. We honor God so much for her. Amen. Such a jewel to the house. And we praise God for all of the father's children. We thank God for a couple uh, from our worship team this morning. Amen. A lot of our team members are out and they, of course, desire to use precaution. And so we honor the Lord for them in their absence, Minister Jeremy and Sister Ashton and Sister Felicia. Come on, y'all. And Sister Deja, we honor the Lord for them in their absence. And to all that normally would worship, of course, on the worship team, we praise God for you. We honor the Lord for our band. Amen. Got two people out today. Uh, Brother Nick is out and Brother Gerard is out. But we honor the Lord for them in their absence. Thank God for Brother Tay, of course, always holding it down, making sure that we stay in sync. Thank God for Brother Jordan. Amen. Let's honor the Lord for him, Brother Jordan. And uh, you all don't see him, of course, not up there. As a matter of fact, y'all don't really see too many people up there. Amen. But thank God for Brother Jeff. Amen. Who holds down the base. We honor the Lord for him. Amen. I want to take a moment to just do this today because we don't always have the opportunity. But I want to take uh, uh, take a moment to thank God for Sister Andrew, Angie and Sister Carletta. We talk often about them, but can we all just stand to our feet and just thank God for Sister Angie and Sister Carletta. We honor the Lord for them as they always ensure that we are good stewards. And I'm grateful for the one who uh, started with us, and I often uh, think of this, um, and it's always good for me um, to give folk flowers while they're still alive. God for one of our founding members uh, being with us who also helps out our financial team as an advisor. She doesn't say much. She's always sitting in the back. You hear her when she says, oh. But I want to thank God for Mother Dolores Washington, our shepherd mother. We love her so much. Come on, one more time. Let's stand up and thank God for her. Amen. We honor the Lord for Mother Washington. 
and we never forget. For those of you all that don't know how she plays a role and it's a good part in this church, let me help you all understand something. When we started out, when we started our church, we were in a hotel, and we were trying, it wasn't Sister Leslie, she's absent, amen, uh, with taking care of her son and new grand, grandchild, but Sister Leslie had the biggest, y'all remember that? Some of y'all that was here with us, Sister Leslie had the biggest congregation that came to church because she brought herself, of course, and all of her kids, of course, with her. But we were in the Laquita Hotel over in Brandon. Y'all know where that is? No? It's in Brandon. Amen. Right there by the movie theater. Y'all don't go to the movie. Y'all too safe for that. I understand. Was trying to figure out we had to pay week by week. I'm saying this because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. I've got some things that I'm extremely excited about that the Lord is doing in this church, but it has come because we've had faithful and committed stewards. Mother Washington went into her pocket. I was trying to figure out how I was going to get that thing paid for the week. Mother Washington said, Pass. I was walking the parking lot in the hot, brawling sun with a suit on. Thought I was crazy. I was walking the entire parking lot saying, God, you've got to make a way. These are the stories that not, not, not many people hear about. But you got to know a part of the history so that you appreciate the story that God has allowed to. Mother Washington said, Pastor Major, what's going on? I said, Mother, I'm frustrated because we don't right now have what we need in order to make sure that this picture is paid for this, uh, for this, for this hotel. Mother Washington said, Pastor, come on in here. Yeah, I brought on son. I got a towel in my car if you need Mother, Mother Keith's towel is in the car. I got a towel in my car if you need it. And I said, I'm going to pay this. We're going to go and have church. I didn't know whether to be, I, 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 you know, I'm not a crying dude. I was like, oh, man, we got to do that. And I, deep down in my heart, I'm like, Lord, I'm sure we're going to have to. But we thank the Lord for Mother Washington. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, there's so many others who have poured in and sold. I want to appreciate all of you for the sowing that you I appreciate you for that. I don't take it for granted. I honor the Lord for the seeds that you have sown. At this juncture in our service, I want to take a moment to uh, prepare our hearts for the ministry of giving. All of those that are not here, but you sow continuously, week in and week out, we thank you. We thank you for sowing into our church. This is not, listen to me, this is not my church. This is our church that we are stewarding. Amen. And we're doing of God, that God would look at us and be pleased with our honored worship that we give unto him. Amen. I want you to prepare your hearts for the ministry of giving. For those of you that are going to be sown by way of tangible seed, we are prepared to serve you. Sister Journey is here with us. Amen. One of our junior ushers, she's prepared to serve you. And Sister Cynthia, of course, likewise. For those of you that are writing out checks, please make those checks legibly and make them out to Life Hope Church. For those that would desire to give by way of online, um, please go to Givelify. Reference your Google Market, your Android Market, and look for uh, Givelify. There you will find our church logo as well as my face. Please make sure that you clearly and distinctly give to that, of course, if you desire. And then for those that would desire to give by way of secure text to give, you already know the routine. You know the number eight one three. 8133331014. Amen. 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 While you're giving, while you're giving, let me thank God for my aunt being here again. This week, we honor the Lord for Mother Catherine Stevens being here with us. We praise God for her, for her. And let's also take a moment and thank God for a man that just does not stop. He won't quit. He won't give up. He's always stepping up and showing up. Let's give God praise for our senior statesman, Father Alston, who is here with us. Now, y'all got to make some more noise in that. You know, there's some people that just live in a different place with God. 
And I'm a firm believer that he is indeed one of those persons. We don't know what kind of contracts have been made between those who live for me. That's why I'm, it pays to live for God. It, I said it, y'all, come on, y'all. I said it pays to live for God. We thank God for the power of his presence. And um, I'm going to call the sister Austin because that's what she like. But I call her mom Austin. Amen. We honor the Lord for you, woman of God. Amen. Yes, ma'am. And we love you dearly. Prayerfully, we've all been served. If not, again, just lift your hands for those of you again that are watching. We want to make sure you're serving to the kingdom of God. Amen. We're going to move. We're not going to be very long today. Amen. But I do have something. Father taught me that you never gather sheep together without having something to fill their bellies. My prayer is that you will be filled. Be filled with the word of God, the power of God's presence. Uh, this morning, as we are preparing to move forward in the word of God, we thank God for this opportunity. Again, we pray the blessings of God that make us more rich and add up for some of Inducted. Stand up, Trey. You know, he's a guy that you don't hear too much from. He's kind of a chill kind of guy. You don't like all of this attention, but I need y'all to do me a huge favor and make some noise for my firstborn. I can't call him my baby because he ain't no baby. But I want to thank God for my firstborn son. Amen. I was just there and, you know, Make your eyes start leaking a little bit, but you just, you know, fan them. And if that don't work, just shake, just shake your head or do something. But, but I sat there, I sat there uh, as a proud father. And none of our kids are perfect. Please understand that. None of our kids are perfect, and I know you might think you are. Let me be the first. If not, I, nobody else ain't told you. I love you, and I appreciate everything that God has done in your life, but you're not perfect. Praise the Lord. You're not perfect. But I thank God because this boy, I watch him. I watch him. And I watch him as he moves in a very man, a very disciplined manner to ensure that all of his work is done. He starts, you know, hey, he's better than I was. Y'all don't y'all can't say nothing about that because y'all didn't know me. You didn't know who I was, and you didn't know what I did. <laughs> Excuse me. But he works to ensure that he completes his assignments beforehand. Um, I won't talk about his GPA. Well, yeah, I will. Uh, he currently unweighted, I believe, right, wife? Unweighted, he's at a 4.6. And that was before any, before any of his grades for last semester was submitted. And with Ace, he's well over a 5.0. He does this, and I don't, again, nobody can ever say you hear me talking and, you know, all of this kind of stuff about son, uh, my son. It's not because I'm afraid or ashamed. But I appreciate you, son. I want you to know it. Amen. I appreciate you, man. You're doing great. You know, sometimes it just helps talk to your children and tell I know we it, we're, we're quick to point out what they do wrong but sometimes it's very important that you tell them what they're doing right and while many of us might not we, we, we might want to focus more on what they're not doing sometimes it just helps to say I'm proud of you all right y'all ain't like that you're doing a better job than I did that's what you need to start telling your kids because let me help you understand something when I was in high school those years ago they didn't have COVID come on y'all talk to me they didn't have none of the stuff that our kids deal with now 
None of it. And while we think that it's something small, no, it's a big deal that these kids are still willing to even show up and go to school. Do you understand that there are several kids who have said, I can't do school no more because of what they've seen? Because a lot of their, listen, a lot of their classmates in class, a lot of, those, a lot of their classmates are saying, I've checked out. Mentally, I'm not prepared anymore because of the trauma that I've seen and what I've experienced in this. But I want you all to appreciate your kids. I'm getting to the word. But appreciate your kids and make sure they don't have to rely on someone else to do what you need to be doing. Let them hear that word of affirmation that comes from a parent so that they don't have to rely on, or rely on somebody that's doing human trafficking to show them love. I really wish I could talk the way I want to. But we need to make sure, again, that we're doing our due diligence. Parents, I'm going to give you a challenge, and that is simply to encourage your children. Encourage them. I'm proud of all of our kids. I want to say uh, something about my, my nephew, but I, I don't want to take that moment away. His, his parents are not here, but I'm just proud of him as well, my oldest uh, uh, brother Aaron, come on, stand up, man. I'm not going to say it, but just know that God blessed him tremendously. Amen. You can sit down. I'm not going to say it, but I sure want to, but it's not my place. But I'm so proud of him. Amen. We all have things that we have to deal with and manage and go through, but it's good to know that God will always remember. He will always will remember, and he'll keep his word. Let's go to the word of the Lord. I don't want to bore you. to the book of Luke. Book of Luke chapter number five. And this is a very unique um, a message because it's one of the messages that God gave me a lot of different I pray for my mind and the way it works but God gave me a lot of different subjects for this message so I'm just going to err on the side of safety read the scripture and if God allows a word to come uh, we'll put a handle on it alright wish I were at Brown Memorial uh, back when I was a boy because my godfather um, would just preach and God would give him the subject of his message at the end of his message. I appreciate those days so much. Let's go. Let's read. Um, I'm reading from the international. Well, actually, let's do this. Let me read from the NIV version. All right. Um, verse one. One day as Jesus was standing by, you see it? The lake of Gennesaret. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep. All right, I got it. I just got it put out into the deep and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night hard and still haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them out. And they came and filled both boats so that both were full and began to sink. Then Simon Peter saw this and fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all of his companions were astonished by the catch. So were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And Jesus said, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishers for people. From now on, you will be fishers of people. I'm going to, and this just jumped out, um, you all have the opportunity to witness something that God 
Um, again, this allowed me to see in the text. It was illuminated. I'm going to pull from verse 4. Verse 4, the beak clogs put out into the deep. Please allow me to minister from the subject matter out into the deep. Say that with me, out into the deep. Father, we thank you for this in Jesus' name, amen. I've been um, in a very unique place, um, and it happened, of course, since the last placement of uh, the sermon for last year. Last sermon for last year was New Year's Eve. God blessed us tremendously. House was packed. Um, but more than anything, I saw something that I have never seen before in a New Year's Eve service. And that was people who were coming not because of the fact that they were excited about New Year's Eve, but because they were hoping for something greater. Whenever you experience some uh, 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 certain, certain deals of sufferings, it will force you to reach for something greater. That was another sermon that God gave me, reaching for something greater. So um, as we listen to what we've read, I want to encourage you to know that if God, anybody got a word that God gave you, something that God promised you, I'm just trying to find out if I've got a few, just a few. Thank you. I got a couple. So here, here, here's what we need to understand. And allow me to teach you before we get into the preaching. Here's what I need you to understand. If God gives you something to hope for or something to reach for, you must allow nothing to discourage you. No one to discourage you. This is going to be a word that speaks to my business owners, entrepreneurs, and leaders of any sort. You've got to note that there is something about God called integrity. In that he will allow nothing to change what he has stated. God is an integral God. Say that with me. God is in He's an integral God. He's such an integral God that he is the only, he's the only God that will speak a, 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 a word into your now that will reach back into your past and heal you from yesterday's hurt. He's the kind of God that will speak one word. Somebody say one word. One word into your life that will secure your today and anchor your tomorrow. Somebody say one word. God is sovereign. He is an awesome God, a kind of God that nobody can take, of course, and just take and just put on the mantle of a fireplace. He's a God that moves, a hearing God, an acting God. He's concerned about the needs of his people. Here is where we come in with the text. The men in the text were given a direct word from God, but they began to focus on what was not working in their life. They started focusing on the things that seemed as if though they were not matching up to the message that the Lord God had given them. This is what we need to know, that when God gives you a word, I'm relying on it in order to make things happen not what I'm surrounded with, not what I'm seeing. I rely wholly on the word of God. I don't know who this might be for, but if God gives you a word, if God gives you a promise, he is not a man that he should lie. Neither, I'm giving you Bible. The God is not, can I give it to you the way the scripture says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If God said it, he'll bring it to pass. And if he spoke it, he's going to make it good. Look at somebody and say he's going to make good on his word. He's going to make good on his word because he is that kind of God. One of the things that excite me about God, again, is that he's absolutely sovereign. He is awesome. He is auspicious. He is in absolute control and he's in absolute power. Nothing can be done without God. 
hear me? Nothing can be done without God. Before, let me give you a Bible. He said to Jeremiah, before you were formed in the womb of your mom. Let me tell you how powerful God is. Before you were formed in the womb of your mom, I already determined your outcome. That's why when the problems come, we should never find ourselves worrying but worshiping. Why? Because God already knows the beginning from the ending. He said, I'm Alpha, I'm Omega. I'm beginning, I'm ending. I'm the author and finisher of your faith. Here's what we need to remember. That when God is the author and finisher of, watch this, when he's the author and finisher of our faith, that means he foreknows us. Come on. He foreknows us. Watch this. That means that before you watch, listen to me. God searched. Hear me go. Here we go. God searched for somebody to mark. And he chose you. That's what it means when you hear the people of God saying that I've been chosen. That means that God has marked you. What watch this? He's marked you for an expected end. He told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, again, watch this. I know the plans that I have towards you, said God, the thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Lean. Watch this to your light, left and to your right. And say, God has an expected end for me. Come on. I need you to do like what I'm doing. Lean to your left and to your right. And say, God. God has an expected end. Why am I leaning to my left and to my right? Because life will often push you from one side to the other. But when you know that you have an expected end, it doesn't matter how you rock. It doesn't matter how the enemy comes against you. We know that all things work together. I need somebody that loves the word of God. I know all things work together for the good of them that love God. That means when I'm leaning to my left, it's working for my good. When I'm leaning to my right, it's working for my good when the enemy seems as though he's knocked me back it's still working for my good why because God has an expectation on my life and God will never be disappointed by his expectation say that with me God will never be disappointed good to me. Listen to me. God will never, Asha, be disappointed by his expectation. We have our expectations, but God said my ways are not your ways. Come on, talk Isaiah 55. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You thinking down here, but God said, no, that's not what I got on my mind for you. This is what I expect. Can I help some of you all? Lord, I'm trying to get back to where I was. Can I help some of you all out? The reason why the things that you've been trying to do are not working is because that's not what God expects. He said you, hear me clearly, he said you are still okay with being safe. He said but there comes a season in your life where you have to step out of the zone of comfort because comfort, hear me clearly, comfort is the enemy to true growth. God says I want to expect you. I want to enlarge you, but you got to learn how to be okay with stepping out even if you got to step by yourself. With standing alone knowing that if God be for you. Get back to where I was. I need you to lean on uh huh. Lean on a family member for those of you that's watching online. Lean on a family member and say God's got me. Come on, I need you to say it. Those of you that want to say it in here, it's all right. Come on, say God's got me. That means it doesn't matter who leaves, who aborts me. Hear me clearly. It doesn't mean who left me for dead, who abandoned me. God's got me. God ordained you. That's why you couldn't be a stillborn. Somebody say God ordained me. That's why you couldn't be a terminated pregnancy. God ordained you. That's why you couldn't be an aborted baby. God's got you. That's why you couldn't suffer from crib death. God's got you. That's why he, watch this, that's why he chose you. It's because he's got you. God sanctified you. When your hands were still wombed in the, mom, in, the, in the belly of your mom, God had a plan for your life. Watch this. When before they could determine your gender, God said, I've already got a plan. I've already got an outcome. Watch this. Before your mom started having uh -huh, the morning sickness in the first trimester, God said, I'm already fixing. I've already fixed it. I'm not a reactive God. I'm proactive. Before you, watch this, before the problem even comes, I already got the solution. Huh. That's why for many of you, you've been set apart. You're different. 
And that's why when you try to walk and march, let me talk to y'all on here. When you try to march to somebody else's drum, it never works. No, because, watch this, there is a demarcation. There is a specific mark that God put on you that made you definitively and distinctively different. That's why you don't fit in. Awesome thing about God is that um, whenever he marks you, he sets you aside. And while you seek to do what everybody else is doing, God says, no, you can't do that. And now, before you start thinking only about sin, no, that's not, I'm not just talking about sin. Sin is a very strong part of this equation. But I'm not just talking about sin. I'm talking about measuring yourself by others' success. By looking at everybody else's status to determine how successful you are in your life. Who's right? God said, before any of this, I put my seal on you. You're a stone in motion, an arrow shot from the heavenlies into the earth to complete a mission and an assignment. I need y'all to hear me today. So, if we are special to God, the enemy becomes terrified of those that God wants to use. Can I talk? He becomes terrified of those that God seeks to use for his glory. Hear me. When, you are, when you've been set aside for God's glory, the enemy will come after you with everything that he can. Listen, let me help you where he starts. He starts at the most vulnerable place, and that is in your mind. I can't tell you how many people that God showed me, and many of them are not here today, but God showed me that there are several people that are battling in their mind. Hear me. They're not battling only again with sin. They're battling with, watch this, whether or not they are successful and whether or not, hear me, whether or not they are accomplishing what God has intended for them to accomplish. And so many of them fall into a deep state of depression and y'all don't even know it because y'all too busy having church. Well, I guess this sermon just fell flat. Enemy doesn't mind you living out your days, or should I say just waking up and seeing another day as long as you never live. He's okay with you existing. But he doesn't want you to really live. And many people are existing. They wake up. There's a routine. My wife showed me something this morning because I have a routine every morning. Sunday mornings, like clockwork. She messed with me bad this morning, Brother Ted. I must call her my nickname. But Janae, she messed with me real. She messed with God that real bad this morning. I woke up. It was a different kind of morning. And so I... She's like, what? This is different. I'm like, well, good morning. <laughs> she said, this is different. And uh, anyhow, I woke up and I didn't have my normal routine. I normally have a certain type of breakfast. You know, but today was altogether different. And you know how it is when things are different, maybe not in your house, but in mine, or should I say in my life. I have a, it, it, there's a pattern that I use. If something doesn't go right on that pattern, then it seems like, oh, Lord, this, this is, Lord, I, I, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I've done wrong. I've, I've sinned. But sometimes the problem is our pattern. Sometimes the problem is our pattern. Sometimes God simply wants to break our normal pattern, break our normal routine to show us something different. My wife said, today's going to be a different kind of day. And guess what? It has been a different kind of day. Not a bad, but a different kind of day. What am I saying? Sometimes God will purposely interrupt your routine. He 
will stir up that which seems like it's normal in your life. And if you don't rely heavily on him, you'll think that you've done something wrong. You'll think you start rebuking every devil you know. I rebuke. No. Hold on now. Real. Sometimes God wants you to sit in the moment to hear what he's saying. And so the enemy comes right when things are different to start bringing the wrong thoughts to your mind because whatever feeds your mind, I say this often, is what's going to fuel your life. I need y'all to hear me. I need y'all to hear me. So the enemy doesn't mind how many days you see as long as you don't live. Look down your road and say, God wants us to live. So the enemy comes to steal, to sabotage, to abuse you, to destroy you, to kill you so that you never have an opportunity to live. But God the potter desired that you be profitable. Profitable and useful to the kingdom of God. Let me share with you what we've read. I've got about 10 minutes, literal 10 minutes. These men are doing, hear me clearly, what they're good at. They are professional fishermen. I'm not talking, they're not novice. They're doing what they're passionate about. Oh, Lord have mercy. They're doing what they're called to do. They are professionals. And here they are. Saying, I'm giving up. I'm not saying it, but my actions have shown. I'm giving up on what I'm passionate about. The fire that used to wake me up in the morning. And give me new formulas, new ideas, and new solutions. That fire. It's not going all the way out, but it's on its way. That fire is gone out. The passion leave it. The men, the Bible says, are watching. They're washing their nets. They're washing their nets. They're fishermen. That's their business. Everybody that's a former business owner, a leader, raise your hand. I come against every spirit of discouragement that you silently deal with, the frustrations that you deal with that nobody else sees. Here's the frustration. They know what they're good at, but God has interrupted what they're normally good at. Because what, my God, what they are destined for is bigger than the little area that they're in. All right? What does Jesus say? They're on a lake called Genesaret. We read it there in, chapter, um, in verse 1. Jesus speaks to them. Watch this. But before he speaks to them, he sees them at the edge of the water and they're washing their nets. You'd be surprised to know who's washing their nets. They've already given up on their marriage. They've given up on the relationship. They've given up on the fact that they'll ever be happy. Washing their nets. Simply because of the fact that something that they were good at did not work. It was not working the way that they thought it should. Share this with me. Change your expectation. Comes to the lake. He's doing what his father told him to do. He's giving the word of God. The lake was, it was full of fish. The Bible says that he gets into a boat. Sees him in fishing, gets into a boat, and then he sits down. Now, this struck me because of the fact that God chose to sit down, or Jesus chose to sit down while the men are having a problem. You would think that that would be the time when Jesus stands up. I'm just giving you word. But Jesus like, oh, yeah, guys, I see what you're doing. I'm going to take a seat. 
And then he starts teaching. Let me tell you what God gave me from this. These men have a problem with the boat. Jesus sees the problem as a platform. For some of you, your problem is God's platform. Because he's going to show you how to get more than you ever expected. With your, oh God. He's going to show you how to get more with least. With, 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 with less. He's going to show you how to do. Sometimes we look at the numbers to determine how great it is. And God said, that ain't what I'm doing right now in your life. I'm showing you how I can do exceeding abundantly above all that you may ask or think according to the power that works in you. The challenge is we need to change our perspective. Look at it from a different angle. What is God doing in your life that you are not aware of? It's going to be a challenge, but God told me to give you this word on day one of our fast. My prayer is that it has been, uh, Junior, that God would change our perspective. Because if your perspective does not change, you'll allow the problem to always be seen as a problem and not God's platform. God said, I'm going to use the very thing that seems like it's a problem in your life, and I'm going to show you how you are entering into the greatest season of your life. You're entering into the ground. I know they said no. But God said that no is necessary so that it will usher you to the right posture of a yes. You need to hear what I'm saying. God said, I know that there is a problem. You are good at fishing, but you have not caught any fish. What does God tell them to do? He tells them the place where you are. It's not deep enough. Oh God. Can I talk? Can I can I just teach for a moment? He tells them the place where you are is too shallow. I know you thought this, watch this. I know you thought that this was the greatest that it could ever be. But he tells them, you got to launch out into the deep. The problem is, you watch this, you have greatness on your life, but greatness and small-mindedness don't mix. That is where the real frustration, I wish I could really teach this. That's where the real frustration comes in. Because you know that you've been called to greatness, but every time you throw, every time you throw that net, all you come up with is small-mindedness, and it becomes overwhelming, and you, you start suffering from burnout because you see people who are not as qualified as you that seemingly are doing far greater than you. I ain't got to like me today. I came here with a message from God. I don't care if it gets one person, one child, one boy, one girl. God said, you listen, you got to make sure that your frustration does not get the best of you. You got to go deeper. Somebody say go deeper. Go deeper. Go back to the planning phase. Look at what you originally planned and say, watch this. Learn how to say, God, this is what I had in mind, but what do you have in mind? I dare you to do it. What do you have in mind? I'm going to talk to y'all that quiet in here. What do you have in mind for my life? One of the greater challenges that we deal with as leaders, I've got three minutes is that God has given us great vision. He's given us great vision. But again, when God gives you great vision, you can't great, get great vision from out of small-mindedness. God tells the boys, launch out into the deep. Help me say this. I'm going deeper. Come on. Come on. Say, I'm going deeper. Well, let me try to get to something. Oh, so say this again. I'm going deeper. Now, this is where it gets really interesting because he tells them 
The only way that you're going to get the greatness that is on your life is that you're going to have to take all of the, all of the energy and the strength that you have left and use it to move out farther. Go deeper. Go deeper. Why does he tell them to go deeper, Sister Sandra? The reason why he tells them, Minister Irvin, to go deeper is because they're trying to catch big fish in small, shallow waters. The reason why some of you all, watch this, hear me clearly. The reason why some of you all have not been able to get that greatness is because you haven't gone deeper. you got to use all of the energy that you have left to go deeper. Somebody say that, go deeper. You can't get big fish in shallow water. God said, I need you to go deeper. It's not over. You just got to go deeper. Let the devil hear you say, I'm going deeper. Come on. Let the problem hear you say, I'm going deeper. The circumstance, let it hear you say, I'm going deeper. You've been washing your nets, but it's not over. Pick that net back up and get out. Go deeper. What do you mean, Pastor Major, by go deeper? You've got to go back to the area. Watch this. Go back to your planning phase. Write the vision. Make it plain. Y'all remember we read that? Write the vision. Make it plain so that everybody that's coming, I need you to hear this. God has a number of fish that have, watch this. They ain't going to get in nobody else's net except for yours. That's why I'm telling you, get your net back out and Go deeper. Say that with me. I'm going deeper. The reason why you got to go deeper, again, is because, watch this, what we fail to realize is that God is the master. I told you I got three minutes. God is the master of the sea. He ain't hearing me. Do you remember when the men said, watch this, Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. Come on, y'all. He said, let's go over to the other side. The Bible says that Jesus was asleep. He was asleep. I can tell y'all don't read your Bible because that was a moment where you should have started shouting without the music. Here's it. Uh -huh. Here, here's what, ha what, what happened. Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the ship. The Bible says that the men became overwhelmed because there was a storm. A storm began to blow. The winds, the Bible says the wind became boisterous. The waves started moving. Jesus, watch this. Jesus was asleep because Jesus wasn't worried. Same thing. Jesus gave them a word saying, let's go over to the other side. So that should have been an assurance for the men to tell them, you know what? It might be a storm. But if Jesus said we're going to go over to the other side. Then we're going to make it to the other side. Lean on your family member and say, we're going to make it. We're going to make it to the other side. So the Bible says that they went down, woke up Jesus. Jesus was trying to get him a little power nap. Watch this. He, they woke up Jesus. Jesus said, what, what y'all want, man? He said, you know what, Jesus? We, we, we're in the midst of this storm. The Bible says that Jesus began to speak, watch this, to the winds and speak to the waves. If he can speak to the winds and speak to the waves, watch this. And the winds don't have no ears. And the wave don't have no ears. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And the water don't have no ears. Come on, y'all. And the ship don't have no ears. Watch this. He begins to speak and and the winds and the waves obey him. They ask the question. They say, what manner of man is this that the winds and the waves obey him? The winds and the waves don't have no ears, but the fish do. Y'all better hear me. So there is a certain number of fish that God has specifically for you. So hear me, my brothers and sisters. Uh, there, 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 there's something. Come here. There's something about God. Grab that towel from out of my bag, please. There's something about God that God will always, he'll always anoint. He will always anoint you for the assignment. He will always anoint the fish. Just put it right there, please. He'll always anoint the fish that he's assigned for your life and nobody watch this nobody else can get the fish that's assigned to your life I need you to have a confidence about you there's something about your business there's something about your leadership style there's something about you that won't watch this that we, there's only a certain level of success that God allows to come through your hands because he anointed you watch this but you gotta launch out go deeper because when you go deeper watch this when you go deeper what other people have died in you're able to survive when you go deeper you're able to go right in the place of the struggle and see your greatest success when you go deeper open your mouth and say go deeper 
right in the place of attack. I feel God here right in the place where the winds start blowing and the nets are being thrown out. God will say go deeper. Be right, right in the place of your aggravation, your degradation. When people are talking about you and you did nothing but help them out, God will say go deeper. You're focusing on what they said, but you haven't focused on what God said. Look at somebody and say go deeper, go deeper. There, there, there's something there's something about God when he requires that you go deeper. Watch this. He requires that you go deeper but God says when you go deeper don't think that you're wasting your energy you watch this your obedience is an investment come on y'all your obedience is an investment so watch this when we call him master we say that he is sovereign and God of all he's master over diabetes master over cancer master over failure master watch this master over famine master over doubt master over hypertension master over your tears did you not know that God has an assigned season for your tears but he says weeping may endure God help me for a night but if you can just hold on keep yourself together and go deeper joy is coming in the morning somebody in the next week and say joy is coming in the morning I know you toiled all night I know you discouraged but please after you tried everything and everything has failed try Jesus one more time go deeper look at somebody else and say we got to give God another try I know everybody else criticized you. They neglected you. They ostracized you. But God said, no, this time I'm not going to allow you to rely on people. I'm going to do something in your life. So Peter says, you know what? You've asked me to do something that's hard for me to do because I'm upset. I'm mad. I'm frustrated. I'm aggravated. But the Bible says, Peter said, nevertheless, I need you to get a nevertheless in your mouth. Get a nevertheless in your spirit and say, nevertheless, Watch this. What does nevertheless mean? That means I'm not going to consider what I lost. Open your mouth. I see y'all ain't wanted, you ain't ready to have nothing today. I need you to know that God is about to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works in you. But you got to come into an alignment. Participate in your prophecy and say nevertheless. Nevertheless, I don't care what I lost. Nevertheless, I've lost energy. I've lost steam. I've lost zeal. But nevertheless, I'm going to go deeper I might as well go for it everybody else around me come on everybody else around me they're falling like flies but I'm gonna go deeper everybody else around me they're doing everything that they want to do but there's a breakthrough on your road there's a breakthrough in your life there's a breakthrough that alcohol can't give you Come on, y'all. Come on. There's a breakthrough. Uh -huh. There's a breakthrough that you can't get by going on social media. There's something about when we say nevertheless. There's something about when we align ourselves. Did you not read the Bible? The Bible said, at the word, nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to try it again. Open your mouth and say, it might be tough. I might have, watch this. Come on, say it with me. It might be tough, but I'm going to try it one more time shout it one more time oh God shout it one more time I'm going to try it one more time I'm going to show up and when I show up I'm going to show up in power lift your voice and say one more time it's going to be something I got to stop I gave you all my word it's going to be something that goes beyond your normal expectation how can we say that because the Bible says that when he, when he told them to launch out, they were throwing, watch this, watch the miracle that we miss. They were throwing one net. But when Peter and his God said, nevertheless, at your word, I'll do it again. Jesus said, let down, not just one, let down your nets. Didn't make sense. It did not make sense because according to what they caught, 
They didn't catch nothing. Come on, y'all talk to me. We just read it. They caught absolutely nothing. But because they obeyed the voice of God, God counted their obedience as righteousness. So the things that you're trying to understand, God says, I don't need you to understand it. Just do it. You're going to be faced with some opportunities. Within the next, while we're on this consecration, but you need to make sure that you have, watch this, you have the right posture so that you don't miss the moment. He said, nevertheless, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to try it one more time. The Bible says that Simon cast his net. But Jesus said, let down your nets. God gave them a net-breaking experience that was pressed down, shaking together. And it ran over so much so, watch this, that the true partners, I didn't say the imposters, I said the true partners, the other partnerships, y'all catch it, the other partnerships, <laughs> all right, I'm going to say it again, because y'all still looking at me like, you know, you know how Scooby-Doo used to be looking? There are certain ships that you will always have in your life, relationships, right? Partnerships. The Bible says that the other ship, the other partner, there's two of them. There was a partnering ship, partnership. They had to call a partnership over because there were so many fish. The people that have been loyal to you and that have always had your back in the ups and the downs, God said, I'm going to even show them. Wrong word, wrong Sunday. I'm going to show them the blessing of them being partnered with you. You don't even realize the people that you're going to bless. Some of the miracles that God has on our lives, it's bigger than us. That's why God won't let you stop. Say this, the miracle is bigger than me. Stand to your feet. Isaiah chapter 43 says God will make a way in the wilderness and cause rivers in the desert. He says, behold, I will do a new thing in you. Something that you've never seen before. Don't make sense because normally in the desert you don't find rivers. But when God speaks a word, his word is so powerful and he, he doesn't wait on the environment to line up. Somebody should have said amen. Let me pray that you go home. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for giving us this opportunity to share this word with these, your people. I ask in the name of Jesus that for everyone that may be discouraged, God, do something that awakens us to what you're doing. Help us, God, and reach into the areas of our lives that seem like we have failed. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you would bless us, those of us that are leaders. Give us courage and strength. Give us power. Restore to us the joy of our salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray this prayer over every household. Bless in the name of Jesus every family. I pray for those, God, that have tried and perhaps did not get it right the first time. Show yourself mighty and show yourself strong. In the name of Jesus, I pray for open doors. Come on. I pray for open opportunities. I thank you for the businesses that you will bless. I thank you because this will be a net-breaking year. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. I thank you because this will be a net-breaking
groundbreaking year. Let me help y'all explain what the Lord is saying. The net worth of your life is about to change. Come on. The net. There's a gross and there's a net. The net worth of your life is about to change. For whoever that's, whoever needs that, get it, get it, get it, get it. Thank you because you will do exceeding abundantly. Thank you because you will exceed the abundance. We've been faithful over the few. We've been good stewards over that which is few. Make us rulers of many. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for this net breaking year. Thank you for the numbers of exponential growth. In the name of Jesus. Right in the middle of this, which the world, of course, is considered a pandemic, you're going to show us that there's a purpose in it all. I give you praise because you're going to show healing even in seasons of sickness. Come on, y'all. Heal the minds of your people. Strengthen us and give us the courage that we need. For this, we thank you in advance because your credit is good with us. It is in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Come on, y'all, clap your hands and act like you're glad about it. Real quick before we dismiss, I want to open the doors of the church. I was reminded about this, that I don't do it like I should. Y'all pray for me. I'm trying to get it together. If there's anyone that decides to become a partner of this church, Come on, y'all make some noise. Thank God. Come on, turn around, brother. Oh, excuse me. Um, let's give him a sanitized mic. No, no, I mean that. Let's make sure everybody's safe. Um, but I'm going to allow him for the sake again of who he is. I've met with him. We've talked had dialogue, let him introduce himself of course to us, so glad to have him on board go ahead, praise the Lord church praise the Lord church glad to be here um, the Lord sent me to Life Point, I came from Virginia and the Lord showed this church to me, and I said Lord I can't go to no Sefner, that's too far the drive from Wesley Chapel but then the Lord showed me the new address God has a way he has a way of making things happen. And I'm trusting God in this season. He's about to do some new things. No matter what's going on, you need to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not down to thy own understandings and in all thy ways acknowledge him. And I'm telling you this because the enemy is going to come. He's going to try to distract the things God has in store for this church. And Pastor Major talk, but God is doing some things in Life Point, and I'm glad to just be able to be here. I thank God. I, I go by Brother Will. Technically, I'm not Brother Will, but I thank the God because He allowed me to become an elder in the Church of God in Christ. And I come from Washington, D.C. jurisdiction, and God allowed me to be here. Um, I asked my supervisor, I said, Lord, I want to move to Florida. I don't want to stay in Virginia. And when I brought it to her, she said, Go ahead. You can move been in COVID for two years almost, go ahead, you can work remote, and I thank God for that, so I'm trusting Pastor Major, and I'm leaning to him, and I thank God, I, I met with him the other day, and I said, Lord, I thank you for my new pastor, I'm going forward in God, and I'm excited, don't let the enemy steal your praise, that's all I'm going to tell you, no matter what happens, don't let the enemy steal your praise, amen. Amen, God bless you, let's thank God for Brother William, oh, excuse me. As you heard him say from the year of 2014, was it? 2014, Elder Williams. Let's give God praise for him. Amen. We welcome him into the family. Let's make sure um, Sister Stephanie, Sister Stephanie, uh, Elder Williams is right back there in the back, right there. Um, if you do me a favor and just make sure that she gets all of your information. We honor the Lord for what God is doing in the life of our church. God is sending the help that we need. I said, God is sending the help that we need. Amen. And I believe that God is going to do even more as we continue to yield ourselves to him. We honor the Lord for him. We're grateful to have him on board. Uh, he is, he's a sharp man. Sharp guy. He's sharp. Amen. And uh, if you'll hear more about him, get
get to know him, of course, as we all grow and go together um, as we move again to, uh, to that end. God bless all of you. Let's all stand. of this ministry. Come on, join in with me. Thank you for what you're thanking God makes room for more. Come on, thank you for what you're doing in the life of this ministry. I give you praise and I give you glory because not in many days hence we will see thank you Lord, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We God give you praise and we give you honor for all things. Continue to bless us, strengthen us and keep us all safe. It is in Jesus name we pray this prayer. Thank God and amen. Please, ma'am and sirs, as you're exiting this sanctuary, please exit safely. Make sure that you have your mask. Of course, for those of you that have one, let's make sure, again, that we're tuning in. This morning was our first day of the fast. Amen. I look for more of you all to join me in the morning at 7 o'clock for prayer. I was on there this morning, and I was waiting I saw, I saw, I saw. I was on there this morning and I was waiting. I want all of you to make sure that you have, amen, make sure that you have all of the information regarding our fast as well as our daily prayers, all right? God bless you all. Love you. Until next time.